the legendary Lefty Drizel, an icon who personified Maryland pride, passed away this morning at the age of 92. This is Wayne Vining with Turf Talk. We're under the stands here at Xfinity Center. Ernie Graham to the right, Reggie Jackson to the left. Both of you guys played for Lefty. I'm going to go with Ernie first. Give me your best memories of Lefty Drizel. Well, I remember those loud uh, sport coats in the diamond rings uh, first. And um, just uh, his presence. He, he, he was a big guy. And, um, you know, he was a special kind of guy. You had to respect him. Uh, whether he agreed or not, he was the kind of guy, the kind of coach that you respect more than anything else. So you're a Baltimore guy. You're a Philly guy. How did he recruit you? Well, Howard White. His other assistant coach, Will Jones, were guys that came to Baltimore and uh, recruited me. He came to my house, he talked to my parents. Uh, at the time, there was a position open. Steve, Steve Shepard just left. Small forward position was wide open, so I, um, I said, well, I'll come. And uh, you know, things went another way, but you know, I'm still grateful that I came. Well, you're an all-time Maryland legend, so something must have worked out. Sure. Yeah, Reggie, yeah. how'd you get here from Philadelphia? Well, I got here because I, uh, and I did well at Roman Catholic. I was a high school All-American, McDonald's first team All-American. All and I was recruited by so many schools and I always wanted to go to Maryland. I, I was recruited by Dean Smith, uh, uh, Duke, and all, all the different schools around the nation. But I chose Maryland because I wanted to come here. There was something about Maryland. Uh, and I wanted to be, I, I met a bunch of guys like Ernest, like Buck and Albert, and a great man in Dutch Morley. And it was just such a camaraderie. Lefty was, been, Lefty was a great coach, but he knew what to do. And I, you know, I respect him. And I'm sad that he passed. Thank you. I want to say this too. Um, it was very sad when when his wife passed. Yes. And I'm happy for him because now he gets to go home to his bride. That's right. Um, and I'm sure that's tough. I've been with my wife 40 years, and I couldn't imagine her not being here one day. But so I'm that's happy true. for him. Um, to join his wife, That's right. and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they are holding hands, and, and she's kind of giving him orders like she used to. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and that's that's working out very well. Uh, uh, Chuck and the kids, I'm, yeah. I feel bad for them, but he poured a lot into them. Uh, you know, he gave them all the opportunities to be coached for Chuck and his daughters and all to go to college and get degrees and all. He did a great job as a, as a, as a family man as well, so not just about basketball. Well done. All right. That's correct. Guys, thank you for being on Turp Talk and for being back on Turp Talk. And uh, we'll see if we get some more Maryland greats to talk about Lefty as the day goes on. Now, the real focus of today is actually on Lefty Grizzell. He was born on December 25th, 1931, passed away today. He is the original iconic Maryland basketball coach, a career record of 786 and 394, won 67% of his games. At Maryland, he was 348 and 159. They had some great, great teams. My first real game was at Coffell House on January 27, 1979. Albert King led those Maryland Terrapins over highly ranked Notre Dame when Kelly Trapuca went under a good throw career. Turks win that in overtime. Larry Gibson tied it up at 66. God, that was a, that was a fantastic day, Mason. You know, that, that, that was important because uh, when Lefty did for basketball, not just wins and losses, but there's a lot of things that should go in, doesn't always go into the Hall of Fame voting, and certainly what Lefty did for the game of basketball, I think, was the big thing that pushed him into the Hall of Fame. Well, the coach was amazing. I actually, um, uh, Maryland was not initially my first choice. They were number five on my list. But once coach came in with this charismatic flair, and with, with that kind of trusting nature, um, I, as soon as he left, I told my mom, I said, I'm signing with Maryland. And yeah. that's how that worked for me. By the way, this is Jeff Baxter, who hit that iconic shot at the Dean Dome. Uh, at that time, a shot heard around the world as Maryland yeah. and one of Lefty's biggest wins. Yes, yes, there. yes. Who was on the? Who was on that team with you? So it was Keith Gatlin was my point guard. Um, um, Lenny Bias, my main man, the guy who we went to at all for all things. 
um, Terry Long and Derek Lewis. Um, we were all uh, on that team, and it, it was just it was it was a big win for us, especially during that year because we needed a huge win. Um, and I think that catapulted us into the NCAA's. I think it did as well. Yeah, that kicked off a party on this campus that was just epic. Uh, best moments talk, thinking about Lefty. Wow, it's a it's a lot of moments when you think about Coach because you know when you think about the word motivation, I think about him. He put the M in motivation. When you think about caring, I think about him as well because he's such a caring um, person. And then when you think about the the the, the person that something he always told us was he was a God fearing person. A lot of people don't know that, but he always told us to put God first. And that helped all of us on our team to grow as men. So it's amazing. But one funny story about him was that when we were playing bad, um, he would come onto the bench, call a timeout, and he would tell us, I'm going to find me five. I'm going to find me five. And that intimated with the fact, the fact that he was going to take all of us out and he was going to put five other players in. Most of the time we were motivated and we got out there and traditionally we came back and got a win. But that was one of the most important stories about him.